Okay, can can I show you something just real quick, and then uh, we're going to uh, we're going to move on. Where is it? Okay, what? Your heart is a pump. What? If you have congestive heart failure, do you want your arteries to be small or big? Do you want your kidneys to reabsorb a bunch of sodium and water back into the blood? No. What's the most important element in muscular contraction? So should a patient with congestive heart failure, dilated, weakened ventricle, get a calcium channel blocker? No, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Should they give them beta blockers that lower your heart rate and force of contraction? Should you, do you want that? Beta blockers prevent calcium from getting into the heart muscle. Do you want that? If you got CHF, do you want that? Do you want less calcium in your heart if it's contracting weaker? No. So this idiot, and he's an idiot because he confuses people. There's two forms of congestive heart failure. One is a dilated, weakened left ventricle. The other one is called hypertrophic, where the heart muscle actually thickens. It's called left ventricular hypertrophy. Have you ever heard of that? Anyways. Calcium channel blockers and beta blockers are used for that, not for a dilated CHF. Are you following this at all? All right, watch. I told you this story like the, at the start of the semester, and now it should make sense to you, at least a little bit, right? Watch. I was working in intensive care, and I'm taking care of a guy that has what's called amyloid cardiomyopathy. Essentially, it's was just dying, right? It was turning to scar tissue. So the, the contraction of his heart was very, very weak. His ejection fraction was 18%. If it's less than 50, you got CHF. Are you following it? So he goes into a really, really fast heart rhythm, and I call the cardiac fellow, and he says, give him five milligrams of verapamil, IV push. Verapamil is a calcium channel blocker. Do you want to reduce the amount of calcium in the heart of a patient who has an ejection fraction of 18? No. So I said, I'm not going to do it. Give it to him. I said, no, I'm going to call the attending. So I called the attending. He says, give him 0.25 milligrams of digoxin IV push. Digoxin increases calcium in the heart and lowers your heart rate. Now listen up because this is true. If I would have given that drug to that guy, and that guy would have died, I lost my life. Because in a court of law, they will say, you are a trained medical professional. You have a license, and you should have known that. So I say it unto you, don't listen. You'll end up working at Olive Garden. Are you ready? Watch. Let's say that somebody, somebody has congestive heart failure. I'm spitballing here. You got me? Watch. Hang on. Oxygen poor blood. Okay. And they decide, they got congestive, and they decide to lay down. What's going to happen to venous return to the right side of the heart? It's going to go up. So now you got more blood in the right side of the heart. Say, yeah. And where does that blood get pumped to? Where does it get pumped to? The lungs. That's right. The lungs. So watch. And you're going to learn. Yeah. I'm yelling. So that more venous blood is going to come back. The right side's not failing. It'll stretch. So it's going to send more blood to the lungs. Say, yeah. And all that venous blood is going to come back to the left side of the heart. But the left side of the heart's jacked up. And now it's going to get overstretched even more. 
So what's going to happen to the force of contraction of the left ventricle? It will go down. So what's going to happen to the blood pressure? It goes down. And that blood pressure is going to be sensed by what? By what? I'm waiting. Kidney. Right. See, if you looked at that, I had the kidney PowerPoint up. <laughs> and when there's a drop in pressure in the afferent arterial, it activates the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. So the arteries get constricted and the kidney starts reabsorbing more sodium and water. So what happens to the person's blood volume? It goes up even more. Tell me you got that. So when someone's congestive heart failure starts going out of control, it goes out of control rapidly. I'm talking 15, 20 minutes. They were doing fine, and the next thing, they're taking a six-foot dirt nap, and you need to understand that. Say, yeah. Uh, so you give them ACE inhibitors because you want to prevent aldosterone from reabsorbing sodium, and you don't want the arteries to constrict. You want them to dilate. Yes or no? For real? All right. Okay, here we go. I'm done with the kidney, almost. Ready? Write this down. This is something you have to remember. I'm not giving it to you, ever. Just this time. And I'm going to say it in Swahili. What's pH of your blood? What's one of the ways oxygen is transported in the blood? Bound to the iron on hemoglobin and dissolved in the plasma. How is it measured as dissolved in the plasma? As a partial pressure. So the next thing you're going to see is PO2. And normal PO2 is 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of mercury. That's how pressure is measured. Blood pressure is measured that way. Then you're going to measure oxygen saturation and what that measures is the amount of oxygen bound to the iron on hemoglobin and when that blood that venous blood goes through the pulmonary capillary and gas exchange occurs in the alveoli and the pulmonary capillary when those red blood cells leave the lungs and start coming back towards the left heart 96 to 98 percent of all of those red blood cells should have an oxygen bound to the iron on hemoglobin. Do you understand that? So in the hospital, if you're like a nursing assistant and you put the little thingy clip on them, what you're actually measuring is the amount of oxygen bound to the iron on hemoglobin. So if you've ever looked at it, when it gives you a number next to it, it has a little percent sign. Say yes. That's what it's measuring. Then you look at PCO2. That's the amount of CO2 dissolved in the plasma. And that normal is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. You got me? And then the last thing you're going to look at is your Twitter account. Is bicarbonate. And bicarbonate, we learned, right, like the first week of class, that bicarbonate's an electrolyte. And electrolytes are measured as milliequivalents per liter or millimoles per liter. Are you, are, are you with me? Guys? All right. Watch. You're going to get this. What are you eating? You know what? That's like eating oh, clay. Write this down now. If the pH is less than 7.35, if it's less than 7.35, it 
It's an acidosis. If it's greater than 7.35, spitballing, or I'm sorry, not 3.5, 7.45. It's, it's an alkalosis. Write this down, tattoo it. If you get it tattooed, even fake tattooed, I'll give you extra credit. Now watch. I'm going to explain to you how to interpret arterial blood gases. Do you understand? Now watch. Always look for the acidosis. Look for the acidosis. The most common acid-based disturbance in the body is an acidosis, respiratory or metabolic. Say yes. There we go. So less than 7.35 acidosis, greater than 7.45 alkalosis. Boom. <coughs> Write this down. Tattoo it. Subplace. Please, for the love of God. PO2 and O2 sat have no effect on pH. You can't look at them and look at those numbers and say, oh, that's an acidosis. The only reason that you look at PO2 and O2 sat is to determine if somebody needs supplemental oxygen or not. That's it. PO2 and O2 sat is to look at oxygenation of the cells of the body, of the blood. Where you determine <coughs> acid-base balance is with PCO2 and bicarbonate. So watch. PCO2 is controlled by the respiratory system. Who's following? And what controls bicarbonate? Kidney. The kidneys. <coughs> Are you with me? So what I want you to do now, and again, what did I tell you? I told you day number one that all this stuff that we're going to be learning throughout the semester is going to be related. Yeah, it's going to haunt you. Here we go. Yeah. Don't hate. Extrapolate. Here we go. Got me? All right, now watch. Watch. <coughs> what system controls carbon dioxide? What system controls bicarbonate? If somebody sticks a dirty, dirty dish rag down your throat and the CO2 or PCO2 goes up, which way is the equation going to go? So what's the only system that can compensate for a respiratory pH imbalance? the kidneys and how will the kidneys compensate if somebody's not breathing so good and their PCO2 is going up what do the kidneys do what did they we just learned this right there you go they will secrete the hydrogen ions and reabsorb the bicarbonate back into the blood so what will happen to the circulating level of free bicarbonate if the kidneys are helping out for a respiratory problem? It goes up. I can't even tell you. That's high-level thinking. If you follow that, that's high-level thinking. Do you understand? And I'm telling you, when you get into clinical, you'll be light years ahead of everybody else. I guarantee you that when you get into clinical, there's going to be people there that don't even know what pH is. And you ain't going to be one of them. Because if you are and I find out about it, I'll mark your whole life wrong. Yeah, I'll give you a karate chop right to the left clavicord. huck a tuck -y. yeah. Guys, okay, watch. Watch. If the cells of the body, who cares why, through metabolism, metabolism, 
are making more hydrogen ions than normal and dumping them into the blood. What's going to happen if they remain free floating? The pH goes down, don't it? But what do you have circulating freely, I might add, in the plasma of your blood? That's right, because that's the only other thing in the blood right there. And that bicarbonate will grab it, lock it up in carbonic acid. So what did bicarbonate do? It buffered it. Now watch. In this case, which way is the equation going to go? It's going to go to the left. Now please get this. Please get this. If the circulating level of bicarbonate dropped in the blood because it's buffering those extra hydrogen ions made by the cells through metabolism, it's going to force the equation to the left. So what's the only system that can compensate for a metabolic acidosis? The respiratory system. Now, here's the big question. How will it compensate? How will it try to help maintain the pH of the blood? It will try to increase the amount of CO2 lost through breathing. So they'll breathe faster and deeper. Please tell me you understand that. You understand this. That's beautiful. I'm not even kidding. This is no joke. You will understand this better than your nursing instructors. I'm telling you this right now. And when you walk down the hall, people will know that you know about arterial blood gas interpretation. They'll look at you differently. Sometimes they give you money, Dylan. They just hand you five bucks for no reason. How many people are with me? You're following this. Okay. So what's the only system that can compensate, at least initially, for a metabolic acidosis? The respiratory system. What's the only system that can compensate for a respiratory acidosis? The kidneys. Tell me you got that. Okay. I'm going to teach you how to interpret arterial blood gases. If you follow this little program I put together for you, you will be official legends. You can get your own YouTube channel, and when you go to the gas station, people will buy your gas for you. You know how to do this? Hey, all right, here we go. Okay, watch. I'm going to give you an example of a blood gas. I'm going to take you step-by-step step through it, and how I interpret it, then I'm gonna give you some examples and you're gonna interpret them for me. Say yeah. Okay, here we go. first thing you want to do, and oddly enough, the first thing that shows up on an arterial blood gas lab sheet is the pH. Got me? So what is this pH? Is it high, low, or normal? Low. It's low. So this is an acidosis. Do PO2 and O2 sat affect pH? No. But the PO2 and the O2 sat, are they high or low? They're low. So what you do is you give them some O's, right? Give them oxygen. Tell me you got that. And you want to give them enough oxygen so that when you put that little thingy thing on there, it's between 90 and 95%. Then you know that you're delivering enough oxygen. Now you look at the PCO2. Is the PCO2 high, low, or normal? PCO2, look at the values. 
it's high. So if the PCO2 is high, what's going to happen to the pH of the blood? It's going to go down. And if the pH goes down, if it's less than 7.35, it's an acidosis. So in this example, what's causing the acidosis? And what system controls CO2? So this is it. You better write this down. This is a respiratory acidosis. How many people are seeing this? Watch. What's the only system that can compensate for a respiratory acidosis? The kidneys. So how do the kidneys compensate? Wait, I, there, I got the picture up. It gets rid of the hydrogen ions and reabsorbs the bicarbonate. So what should happen to the amount of circulating free bicarbonate in the blood if the kidneys are helping out? Is the bicarbonate elevated above normal? It's normal. So have the kidneys caught on yet? No. No. So this is, watch it, watch it. This is an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Why? The kidneys are doing nothing. Watch. The kidneys, remember I told you that the kidneys can correct any pH imbalance if you live long enough, but it takes a while to correct. Once you start making acid at the cell, the respiratory system will kick in almost immediately, but it can't compensate forever. You can't breathe like this forever. <laughs> what could you get done? Couldn't Snapchat or anything. Are, are, are you following this, guys? Okay, so this is an uncompensated respiratory acidosis, all right? I'm going to give you uh, uh, two more before I set you out on your own, okay? See one, do one, teach one. Here we go. So watch. Look at the pH. What's the pH? So it's acidic, right? This is an acidosis. What do you look at the PO2 and the O2 sat for? Give them O's. Right? Now you look at the PCO2. Is the PCO2 high, low, or normal? It's high. So if the PCO2 is high, it's going to force the equation to the right and form free-floating hydrogen ions. Ain't that right? So what's causing this acidosis? No, the PCO2 is high. So this is a respiratory acidosis. What's the only system that can compensate for a respiratory acidosis? How do the kidneys compensate? Please, for the love of God, get it right. They'll secrete the hydrogen ions and reabsorb the bicarbonate. Say yes. Are the kidneys helping out at all? How do you know that? The levels of bicarbonate are elevated. So the kidneys are helping out. Is the pH normal? No, it's still low. So watch, watch. The kidneys are moving in the right direction, but the pH is not normal. It's still acidic. So when the other part, of the other system that's trying to help out is moving in the right direction, but the pH is still abnormal, that's referred to as a partially compensated. Right? The kidneys are moving in the right direction. The kidneys are trying to help a brother out, right? 
Yes or no? What's the treatment? What's the treatment? They're not breathing so good, so make them breathe better. Right? This person may have to be ventilated, put a breathing tube in and ventilated, or they may have to use that, uh, uh, what's called a BiPAP mask. You ever see somebody on a BiPAP mask? They look like they're a fighter pilot. That's, uh, that's uh, in uh, lieu of a ventilator. Because when you stick a tube down somebody's uh, trachea, a lot of problems can happen. So, right, because they lose the upper airway, so they lose all that uh, immune de defense and they can get uh, respiratory infections. How many people followed this? Guides? All right, watch. Ready? watch. One of the things that you don't want to do is you just don't want to look at the pH and say, hey, that's good. I'm going to go on break now. You got me? You look at the pH. Is it high, low, or normal? It's normal, right? Now you look at the PO2 and the O2 sat. Give them some O's, right? Give oxygen. Now you look at the PCO2. Is the PCO2 high, low, or normal? It's high, right? So if the PCO2 is high, if you just looked at the PCO2, the pH of the blood should be acidic, right? But it's normal. So, and what did I tell you? Always look for the acidosis. So this is a respiratory acidosis. What's the only system that can compensate for a respiratory problem? How will the kidneys compensate? So what should happen to the amount of circulating free bicarbonate in the blood if the kidneys are helping out? It should, is it higher than normal? Yes. So are the kidneys compensating? Yes. And they are fully compensating. Why are they fully compensating? Because the pH is normal. Have them breathe better. Maybe they got penomena. Or maybe they ain't reading the textbook. When you don't read the textbook, your breathing slows down. causes causes respiratory acidosis. You ever get a respiratory acidosis from not reading the textbook? Probably have one right now. What does uh, acidosis do to neural activity? Right. That's why you guys probably wall, fall asleep while reading the textbook. How many people got that? Guys? Okay. Do this one. Follow the steps. You're a hurting unit over there, aren't you? You okay? You got a fever? I think you're allergic to blood gases. Dylan's leaving. Okay. You know what? Make sure they do your arterial blood gases, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know you can. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah. Watch. Which would have more pain receptors, an artery or a vein? An artery. Right? Because if you sever an artery and you don't know you severed an artery because you don't feel a lot of pain, you're going to end up bleeding to death because there's pressure in there, right? Body doing stuff that makes sense. So when you get arterial blood gases drawn, that shit hurts. I mean, that stuff hurts. It does. And watch. You don't get arterial blood gases done at your 
annual physical. If you're getting arterial blood gases drawn, you sick. You real sick. Tell me you got that. Do it. Do it. Write it down. Do follow the steps. And just so you know, I'm taking a picture of you guys right now. And if I don't see you following the steps, well, Evelyn, hmm. I'm going to tell your husband. And you know what he did? He, he uh, emailed me. He did. And he said that uh, he was going to take you out to a nice fancy restaurant for dinner. Wow. And if you don't do this uh, blood gas right, he ain't taking you. And I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah, so put that in your pipe and smoke it. Whoever gets this right will get a swig off my Diet Mountain Dew. Just so you know, Dominique, I hate me too. Dominique, do you hate me? You don't? What's wrong with you? Evelyn, you hate me, right? No, I don't. Christine? What about tripping you? Would it? No? You wouldn't hate me then. You trip me, man. It's on. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, who cares? Watch. Who wants to do this? Who's, who's got it? Dominique, go. And say it loud because I can't hear. Uh, that's exactly right. How many people got an uncompensated metabolic acidosis? Say yes. You got that. Why is the bicarb low? No, 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 no. Because what's the only system that can compensate initially for a metabolic acidosis? Right, and the PCO2 is normal, right? But why is the bicarb low? Why is the bicarb low? Wait, wait, don't say it. Wait, wait, don't say it. Why is the bicarb low? So if the cells are making more hydrogen ions through metabolism, bicarbonate's going to grab them and lock them up, so the amount of circulating bicarbonate in the blood free circulate is going to go down. Say yes. You got that. Okay. Just so you know, I'm going to give you a blood gas um, at the end. And if you get it right, right, if you get it right on the final, on the final, you can pick one of your questions.
get it wrong. I mark your whole life wrong. Ready? Now watch, you don't do things right once. You do them right all the time. So you follow the steps. If you follow the steps, you cannot go wrong. You will get this stuff right. Now follow it. Follow the yellow brick road. You can tell me what I'm gonna do after class. I'll give you guys a dollar. I'm waiting. Whoop. Hang on. Did you write it out? Did you take microbiology yet? Who took microbiology? Oh, nobody took it yet? Would you take this class along with an accelerated microbiology class? No. Right. There are people doing it, though. Yeah. They're, well, they're doing it, but they're not doing it. Yeah. Okay, who wants to try it? Evelyn, want to try it? No. With Tyro? What do you mean, no? We don't want to try it. We want to get it free. Taylor? <laughs> Christy? All right, so take me to the steps. Go ahead. Okay. So the pH is normal. Okay. Um, the, uh, the CO2 and O2 fat is low. Plenty of oxygen. Yeah. The CO2 is low as well as the bicarb. Okay. So I say that they are Look at the pH. Oh, it's, it's, well, so it's partial. Is it partial? Partially or it's not partially. Why? Why is it fully compensated? Oh, no. no. The pH is what? Oh, the normal. Is normal. Tell me you got that. Watch. I started doing this, you know, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. And then I was... Um, looking at students like, wait a minute, how can you not get this? I explained this good, right? This is high level thinking. This is very high level thinking. You don't understand. Like if you're getting this, this is high level thinking. You have to take a lot of stuff into account and try to put it together. Do you understand? And if you get that, you're, mo you're moving up. You're not memorizing stuff, you're learning. You got me? So remember, what did I tell you? And I told you if you got a tattooed, even a fake one, what did I tell you? Don't hate, what did you say? Always look for the acidosis, right? So even though the pH is normal, you don't go on break. PO2, O2 sat, you give them some oxygen, right? The PCO2 is low, right? So if the PCO2 is low, the lungs are removing acid. You got me? Now you look at the bicarb, right? The bicarbonate's low. So what's happening? The cells of the body are making hydrogen ions and dumping them into the blood. What's circulating in the blood that can grab them? So again, that you just, you, and, it's the same circus, different clowns. You don't want to do this. So which way is the equation going to go if it's a metabolic acidosis? It's to the left. 
So what's the only system that can compensate for a metabolic acidosis? The respiratory system, right? And how's the respiratory system going to compensate? By getting rid of more CO2 than normal, right? So are you getting rid of more CO2 than normal? Yeah, now I don't know where the blood gas is. Where the heck is it? Ah! Oh. Where is it? Is that it? That ain't it. It's around here somewhere. There it is, right here. So the bicarb's low. So that's a meta. This is a metabolic acidosis. You got me? And is the respiratory system moving in the right direction to try to compensate? Yes. Is it fully compensated? Yes. How do you know? The pH is normal. Yes, but it's not accurate. That's not accurate. Right, because watch. The pH, the PCO2, and the bicarb. The bicarb is going to be lower than normal. The PCO2 is going to be higher than normal because it's venous blood, right? And gas exchange. And the pH will be lower because venous blood, by virtue of CO2 and hydrogen ions from metabolism, are naturally going to have more PCO2 and more hydrogen ions. Why? Because sometimes when I go to do AP test patients, they tell me to get the fuck out. Like, I'm <laughs> Yeah, and you can, look, there's norms for venous blood gases, so they can interpret it, but that doesn't tell you if you're having a, a respiratory problem. You may have be having a respiratory problem, too. You, you don't know. Arterial blood gases, because that blood has gone through the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system is working, if they're normal, you can say, hey, look, the respiratory system's working okay, and the cardiovascular system's working okay, and the kidneys must be working okay. That's why arterial blood gases are much more diagnostic. They give you a lot more information. S say yes. Guys? Okay. So watch. I'm going to answer your question now. Okay. And I'm relating everything from day number one. Are you ready? If your blood sugar is 946, what don't you have floating around in your blood? Insulin. You don't have insulin, right? So your blood sugar is really high. What up, G? I'm said that in a while. I remember I used to say the blood sugar is so high, the glucose is leaking out of the capillary. Now I'm joking about that. A student wrote that. She memorized every word I said. She goes, your blood sugar is so high it's leaking out of the capillary. I'm not even kidding. And here's the weird thing about that. Do you realize how much work that would take to memorize everything I said as opposed to trying to actually learn it? All right, watch. What's the only fuel the brain can use? The brain ain't got no glucose. Are you getting what up G into the liver cells? So the liver thinks you're starving. So the liver will take fat and convert it to what? I can't hear you. No. She threw you under the bus, just so you know. It converts fat to what? No, you can't. No. <laughs> you know, if this was arsenic, I'd drink it right now.
different. The liver cell is too small. And acetone. Those are the ketones. We learned. Are you kidding me? Of course we did. Guys, these are the ketones. Can the brain use ketones as fuel? Yes, they can. But the liver produces more ketones than the brain uses. So what are you dumping into the blood? You're dumping acid into the blood through, wait a minute, through metabolism. What's circulating in your blood that can grab it and hold on to it? Bicarbonate. So bicarbonate will grab those extra hydrogen ions that were formed by the ketones, lock them up in carbonic acid. So which way will the equation go? Please get this right. Which way will it go? To the left. So what's the only system that can compensate for a metabolic acidosis? The respiratory system initially, right? So what will the respiratory system do? Breathe and deeper. That's Kussmaul breathing. Say yeah. So watch. Christy, in response to your question, I don't know this number, but there is a norm for bicarb in venous blood. So what they want to know, she's like, I want to know if I can turn off the insulin drip. So once you, the liver is getting glucose, it will stop producing ketones and dumping them into the blood because you got insulin, now the brain can use glucose. So what should happen to the bicarbonate level if there's less ketones in the blood? Tell me that makes sense. Does it? It makes perfect sense. You guys don't remember? Yeah, when you saw it. Yeah. And then watch. Now it's, now, well, maybe. Remember, uh, dude? Little kid? He's diabetic. Now he's not breathing at all. Should you be breathing like that, sitting there, watching, uh, you know, Housewives of Orange County? Tell me you got that. Look, potassium level's high. How many people followed that? You got that. You understand this. In metabolic, breathing is initially rapid and shallow, but as the acidosis worsens, the breathing becomes deep, labored. Right. Why does it become deep and labored? What does acidosis do to neural activity? The medulla nervous tissue becomes depressed and that breathing drive decreases. So if you don't if they don't correct the metabolic acidosis by giving this kid insulin, it will get worse and he will go into a diabetic ketoacidotic coma and die. Yes or no? Did you follow that for real? Watch. Where is it? Look, potassium level for kids that's high. You got me? His potassium is 5.3. His ionized calcium level is high. Why?
Do you see this? Watch. When you get into clinical, they're going to say, why is there potassium level low? And you know what you're going to I don't know. Why is there calcium level high? Or why is there potassium level high? Why is there calcium level high? I don't know. I forgot that one. They're going to expect you to know this stuff. Okay, so watch. Watch. What's the treatment for DKA? What are they lacking? So what do you give them? And watch, the blood sugar's high. So the amount of stuff in the blood, the osmolarity of the blood is going to be high. So water will get sucked out of all the cells. Now you got more solute, more stuff in the collecting tubules because your blood sugar is so high. So you're going to start peeing more. Say yeah. And watch, watch. If the water gets sucked out of the cells, then the other treatment is you have to rehydrate those cells. So what kind of IV solution do you give them at least initially? Iso, hypo, or hypertonic? Say the other one. Hypo. <laughs> right? You want the osmolarity of the blood to drop. So hypo, low osmolarity, it will force fluid back into the cells and rehydrate them. Do, do you follow that? Watch. I'm not expecting miracles. What I'm expecting you to do is to, to start put, being able to put this stuff together because that's what they're going to expect you to do over there. And with that flipped classroom, they're not going to explain it to you. Yeah? So, watch. Right. Calcium that's bound to albumin is considered calcium that's in the blood. The only physiologically active calcium is the ionized calcium. So when you do that blood test for total blood calcium level, you're looking at the calcium that's bound to albumin and the free-floating calcium. Just like hydrogen ions, if they're not free-floating, they won't affect the pH. Just like calcium, if it's not free floating, it won't affect the cells of the body. Did you, does that make sense? Okay. So, watch. And before I go over this, I'm going to ask this question. What does acidosis do to neural activity? What does hyperkalemia do to neural activity? And why? Hyperkalemia, high potassium. Wait. What is high level levels of potassium? Due to the heart. Well, it closes the sodium ratio. It closes the sodium channels, right? So what happens to how fast the heart depolarizes? Does it depolarize it quicker? It takes longer. So what happens to the person's heart rate? It goes down. So if potassium, high potassium in the blood blocks sodium channels in the heart. What do you think high potassium does to sodium channels in the nerves? The same. the same. So if the nerve doesn't get sodium in it, it won't fire. So what happens to neural activity? Slow Tell me you got that. Now watch. What's more important to maintain your pH or your potassium levels? So 
what will happen is if the cells start producing a lot of hydrogen ions and dumping them into the blood, built into the cells of your body is a little exchanger. It's called the hydrogen ion potassium exchanger. So it will exchange the hydrogen ions in the blood for potassium in the cell. So what does acidosis do to your potassium level? It makes it go up. Tell me you got that. And the reason you want to do that, the reason you want to do that is inside a cell you have a lot more protein. And proteins can accept and bind hydrogen ions. So you can buffer them intracellularly. Who's following this? Watch it. Watch it. In the kidney. What's more important? To maintain the pH of the blood or to maintain potassium levels? pH. I told you, and I'll never forget it, it was a Tuesday, that potassium and hydrogen ions have to be secreted, right? Remember I told you that? So what will happen is if the pH begins to drop, the kidneys will secrete more hydrogen ions into the urine than potassium. So more hydrogen ions from the blood will get secreted into the urine instead of potassium. So what will happen to your potassium level? It will go up because you're not getting rid of it in the urine. Say yes. All right. That's two reasons why an acidosis causes hyperkalemia. There's another reason why you get hyperkalemia in DKA. That's high level thinking right there. And watch, if you give them insulin, glucose will get into the liver cells and the liver cells will stop producing ketones. So what will happen to your acidosis? Will it get worse or better? Better. So as the acidosis improves, the hydrogen ions and the potassium and it will drive the potassium into the cell. With insulin, you will stimulate the sodium-potassium pump and push the potassium into the cell. And in the kidney, because the acidosis is improving because you gave them insulin, the hydrogen ions is going down, so now you can start secreting potassium into the urine. So nurses, because they don't understand this stuff, they're freaking, oh, look at that potassium level. Oh, 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 where's my Snapchat? All you got to do is give them insulin, and they'll correct it. Tell me you got that. That's high-level thinking. It is. And watch. My buddy, he's a teacher in Arkansas, so we were talking. And I said, the only one who can keep the standards high in terms of what you teach in a class is the teacher. That's it. Right? People say, this is a lot. This is a lot. Tough. It is a lot. They're going to expect you to know this stuff. I guarantee it. Right? You learn this stuff and you internalize it. And when it becomes a part of you, you don't even have to think about it anymore. It's you. Say, yeah. All right. Here we go. You get this right. You can pick your own question. But before I give this to you, I want to tell you something. Okay? Joey Bag of Donuts. You don't know what you don't know. Okay? Keep that in mind when you do this.
right there. Are you going online to look at a blood no. blood gas calculator? Taylor? No, it's not Did you figure it out? I what is it? Respiratory what? Respiratory acidosis. Okay. So it's what? 
Foley uncompensated. <laughs> now you're making up words. So you're saying it's an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Okay. There's no kidney acidosis. No, we're metabolic. So, so what is it? It's a incompensated metabolic <laughs> What is What? So what is it? They're dead. <laughs> so they're heading that way. No, no two ways about it. They're not breathing very well, are they? Come on. don't know what you don't know, right? Now you're going to know. I kept asking you, Christy, because you were so close. It's both. It's a metabolic and respiratory acidosis, but watch. Watch. I didn't tell you that could happen. Yeah. Watch. Oh, do me, well, you won't do it anyways, but, <laughs> well, maybe you will. Uh, there's a, a video on um, uh, blood gas interpretation. It tells you exactly how to interpret the blood gases. It's called arterial blood gas interpretation. Yeah? And also, uh, we're going to start the uh, immune and lymphatic system. Okay. Do you want uh, the third thing for turning in our um, quizzes? Do you want the take home, the multiple choice from all four? You want all four of them? All four of what? The, you could, on Thursday, our uh, quizzes are due. Right. And you want the take home, multiple choice also? That's. Yeah, that's all I want. That's all I want. You don't have to do the essay. Oh, I thought you wanted no. No. You're gonna have to know it for the final. Yes. No. No. You do have a lot of work to do. 
No. What I'm telling you, listen up, because this is, this is absolutely true, right? After this, you no will longer be a student at, after the final, a student in my class, right? So on the final, there's no mercy. You understand? I can walk away and just feel good about myself while you're left here crying. Right? You don't want to do that, do you? Did I tell you this? I think I did. That I live by a CVS pharmacy. Did I tell you this? And when I put the grades in WebAdvisor that night, I go there and I get a big can of Gerber rice and a binky because I sleep like a baby that night because I know I did everything I could to make you successful. And if it wasn't, if you didn't work hard, there's nothing I can do about it. This class is fair, yes? It is. All you have to do is work. Right, and if you work, it'll be okay. Right? It, right? Did I tell you? If you worked hard, it would be okay. Was it okay? There you have it. And you can't get any fairer than that. And I know, watch. I have been in class where I have studied my ass off. And I didn't do well. Here, if you work hard, you will do well. Say yeah. All right, you can ambulate home now. Are you going to ambulate home? Are you going to post the video? Yes, I will.